Hi, my name is Maxwell Lemke, Sue's film player for Analog Brass here in Bellingham, Washington. Thank you for tuning in to Honk United. If you like what you're seeing here tonight, I would suggest going on the festival's website, honkunited.org, and hitting donate, or you should consider buying some merch. Uh, and if you like what we're playing as well, I would suggest going on to, you know, the internet and looking up Analog Brass on Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, Twitter, Bandcamp. I might have said Bandcamp. Uh, anywhere you get music, stream music insert music into your ears and uh... yeah that's about it we got two songs for you tonight first one's called sweet escape it's an arrangement that i made of a gwen stefani song the second song that we got is called smoke uh... by remy gachi in france hope that you like it uh... yeah thank you for tuning into honky united yeah. enjoy yeah.
of the Dirty Water Brass Band, based in Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Last year, Dirty Water celebrated our 10th anniversary, not only as a band, but also as a participant in the overwhelmingly powerful and necessary annual Honk Festival held in Somerville, Massachusetts. This year is the year of the great physical pause, but it's certainly not a year to stop being involved. Dirty Water applauds the work being done this year in creating a virtually realized, punk united world. So in keeping with this momentum, Dirty Water invites you to enjoy our short retrospective of band clips covering 2010 to 2019, taken during our participation in our local honk festival. There really is nothing like this honk phenomena because everyone there is an active participant everyone has the ability to honk on. So thanks from the Dirty Water Brass Band. And if you live in the United States, don't forget to vote in the general election in early November. Peace.
This one is also is not working as you see like uh, it has no it has no neck uh, so we, we are trying at least to get uh, one of the necks but uh, we have failed to get the necks here in Uganda because they are not around then this one we have no spare here Yeah, even this one have no spare, so I'm trying to make it at least so, so that it can work. But again, I have failed because I have no spare with this. So I don't know whether you can be able to get for us this kind of spare. As you're seeing, it is good, but uh, there is no way we can use it. 
and it's a nice instrument so it's also like that and this is the infonium which you told me Sändning med anledning av att det är första maj arbetare rörelsens högtidsdag. an explicitly anti-racist, anti-oppressive, women's activist, social brass, and party band sit here to deliver a social justice message and a good time. Clan Jam Brass Band. We stand for truth, equity, inclusion, social justice, and freedom. Freedom of fear, freedom of want, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of body, and freedom to love. We stand with you. 
Clam Jam Brass Band. Clam Jam believes that body positivity need not be in conflict with inclusivity. We celebrate trans women, non-binary and gender fluid folks, queer women, straight women, cis women, young women, old women, butch women, femme women, all women. Clam Jam Brass Band. We play a mix of pop, hip hop, funk, soul, and salsa, and comment on the stories of our day, reflect on the future, and remember our past through spoken word, noise making, visual storytelling, and movement. We dance with you. Clan Jam Rastan. We fight with the marginalized, the disenfranchised, the oppressed, the immigrant, the overlooked, the invisible, the brown, the other. When you feel powerless and without a voice in your life, we will support you. Clan Jam Rastan! We resist oppression, question the status quo, and will hold accountable those elected officials when we continue to vote into positions of power. In a world that continues to spiral out of control, where nonsense masquerades as normalcy, this is how we will come together to build strong communities and be the change that we want to see. Clan Jam Rastan! We resist when necessary. We build when necessary. In the sage words of Vice Admiral Emmeline Aldo, we are the very last of the resistance, but we are not alone. In every corner of the galaxy, the downtrodden, the oppressed, know one symbol, and they put their hope in it. We are the spark that will light the fire that will restore the Republic. That spark, this resistance, must survive. This is our mission. Clan Jam Rastan!
amazing. All right, so we are at our third stop right here. And because we are talking on topics of intersectionality and climate, I want to introduce to the stage Ms. Suli Vial from College Unbound. She's got words for y'all, y'all. I'm so excited. Take it away. Thank you so much, Jess. Got it. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, I would just like to invite everyone under the sound of my voice to take three collective breaths with me if you please. And as you breathe in, I want you to imagine the future, imagine that future that you're working so hard for everyone here, whether you're in person or you're tuning in through the live stream. You have that imagined future in your heart. And when you breathe out, I want you to release any stress, any tension, and the pain that we have harbored in our hearts from the state of the world. So, three collective breaths starting now, breathing in. Thank you for being here in this container, in this space. I really appreciate you all. If there were ever a time to wake up and take action, it's now. The stronghold of systemic racism and oppression has repeatedly stolen our very breath and taken countless lives of those who share our bloodline. If you intentionally listen, take a moment and you can still hear those steps, steps of those who have marched through the streets. Take a moment and listen. for all of eternity, reminding us that when we say their names, their legacies will live on forever. Say their names. Breonna Taylor! Breonna Taylor! Breonna Taylor! Breonna Taylor! Breonna Taylor! Breonna Taylor! Whether you like it or not, you and me are very much the same. We all descended from the motherland, so my blood courses through your veins. And as I stand here on the state house steps and I look out over my city, I try to stay present as I'm reminded of my past, past and stay hopeful for the future the past, a town called Hard Scrabble, where there were over 20 black owned homes and thriving black owned businesses. This neighborhood was destroyed by white residents during a race riot in 1824. So many families left displaced, dreams shattered, hard work down the drain. <laughs> but if you look there now, it's where Rhode Island comes to catch the train. History equals.
understanding. I hope you're not listening to my words because I'm making them up as we go along. I see friends holding hands and hugging and hugging. We're hugging now. Yes. Do not hugging very close because it's COVID. behind it as far as activism through music. I think it's a very important avenue, very important message that is portrayed every time it every time it happens. You always learn something new from someone else there, something as simple. You might learn something musically, you might learn something socially. Like it might be either way it goes, it's always uh, an experience that makes you a better musician or a better person you to My name is Justin, Justin Terrell, y'all can call me JT, and I play the trumpet. Honk is, is an open floodgates for any welcome musicians, like any, any musicians welcome. It doesn't matter if you're, you're kind of weird or if you kind of got a certain style or whatever, whatever, they welcome you with open arms, and that's the best thing about Honk Fest. It's like one big family just making music, you know what I'm saying? Hi, my name is Thaddeus Ramsey and I play the bass drum and also the sousaphone for the Young Fellas Brass Band, the Big Six Brass Band, down there, every brass band in New Orleans I, I didn't know I performed with. First year I've been to Home Fest was uh, 2011, and I played with the Young Fellas. I've been there uh, three times, one in 2011, one in 2013, and also 2019. Man, Home Fest is just 
unbelievable because you you mostly just see a lot of bands in New Orleans. So me traveling, it's just like a huge Mardi Gras just, you know, in Boston. Oh man, I love the school so much. It's just an awesome experience just to show the kids what we do in New Orleans and bringing it up there to show them how we do it. And you know, music is just one big language and you know, you just kind of go back and forth. That's all we can do is just show them what we do and show them that you can do something with your music, you can do something with the horn other than just be marching in the band and being a robot and learning classical stuff. There's a whole boatload of stuff you can do with your music and your instrument. You just gotta apply yourself. But they have to want to do it too. You know what I'm saying? But I hope that's the message that they receive when we come to the schools. And on top of that, we play our music the same way we play our music everywhere we go. Even when we're here at home, we play the same way so they can feel it, so they can know what it's like to have fun doing what you love. <laughs> They got a lot of interesting stories. I'm pretty sure I can't tell them all, but the one I remember was my first Honk Fest in 2013. Now I just joined the Young Fellas, the Brass Band. And, you know, we go do the, you know, we go do the show the, on the stage. That was one year we just had a big crowd. And Roy, y'all, everybody knows Roy. So when I say this name, you, gotta, you, gotta, you know who I'm talking about. So Roy, he decides he wants to crowd surf. And it actually worked. I thought he was, I thought they were going to drive him. I thought it was going to be a moving moment. Like, they were going to let him fall. They really caught him. And then they really surfed him around the crowd. That was the first time I ever seen that. That was, that was fire. I almost wanted to do it. I was like, nah. Long live the home fest. Represent all the way from New Orleans. Thank you so much, home fest. From the bottom of my heart, all the way from New Orleans. Thank y'all. Man, thank you, Hunk. Shout out to Trudy and the gang. I love y'all. Shout out to the Brass Queen. I love y'all girls too. And home fest, I hope we can come back live and full effect. We gonna tear it down. I promise you. We all gonna tear it down.
Any final message to the honk? Participants? Vote. Ida B. Wells, who wrote in 1910 about the need to vote in order that every person could be represented and therefore not be pushed around by laws that they didn't vote. So we're here in Davis Square to chalk this text on the sidewalk. I love honk, and I've been part of honk a couple of times. And last year, we were part of honk as a group of suffragists, all dressed in white and with grass growing out of our hats and our ears and our shoes so that we were talking about voting green. And what I love about honk is the layering of musicians with activists and so there are joyful, wacko people dressed in crazy costumes all over the place but there's also the messages embedded about how we can work together to change things. Um, this piece is a little more serious because we're in a little more serious season this year in election season. And it has to do with voting. And it's dedicated to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who worked hard to see that all of us would be represented all their life, and voted against the revisions of the uh, Voting Rights Act that would diminish it. So this is for her by Ida B. Wells, writing in 1910 from Chicago. Wells was an investigative journalist who went to the South and investigated why lynchings were occurring after one of her best friends had been lynched in Memphis. And after producing lots of essays about what was actually happening in the South, she wrote this essay called How Enfranchisement Stops Lynchings. So it's the connection between voting and changing the rules, changing society, changing behavior. Um, I think that honk, because it emphasizes spectacle, is an important part of the conversation about how we change things. Because it's the images, very often, that kind of seed in us the desire to make the whole image of the future better. And so images like graphic images and banners and costumes and sky writing and um, all kinds of stuff, you never know what's going to trigger this sort of feeling of elation that we can get from an image that says, yeah, go ahead, you can change this. So this is our image. This is a chalk quotation from Ida. And the language is wonderful. It's 19th century prose, very strong, pulls no punches. Um, and we think this is a great context to make this statement in the middle of honk, in the middle of crazy season of all kinds, where we need to be clear about what we're doing but we need to also make statements in public with art so that people feel things, not just think through them. And that's why we're here. Any final message to the honk? Participants? Vote.
Some 800 people marched from the RMV to the State House on September 26th, accompanied by Babam and the Second Line Brass Band, to demand something that most of us take for granted, a driver's license for any qualified driver. 16 states, D.C. and Puerto Rico already issued driver's licenses and IDs to their residents regardless of immigration status. But in Massachusetts, despite more than a decade of advocacy, immigrants who are undocumented or are still adjusting their status can't legally drive, period. Alicia came here from Guatemala when she was eight. She's now 40, and her youngest son is a junior in high school. She became an organizer for Cosecha because for her, the fight for driver's licenses is personal. I had many family members that had um, been deported. I have family members and friends that had suffered being stuck in a prison, um, and I don't think it's fair. I have drove without a license for many years, and I have seen the impact that happened to my children. It's traumatizing. Um, the fact that every day you get up and you think about, um, am, am I coming back? If the cops are gonna pull me over? Uh, what's gonna happen to me? What's gonna happen if I get deported? I had to bring my children to school. I have five. I had to bring them to school. I had to have to go to work. I had to do carpooling. I had to bring them to the movies. I had to bring them to the library. I had to bring them to the soccer games. I had to do all these things. And what was that? And then not only that, why would I going to put my children through that, but there's not really, like in New Bedford, I'm from New Bedford, Massachusetts, and we don't have really good transportation. And, and with five children, five little kids, I, I couldn't do that. I had to expose myself. And I had Massachusetts is home to 200 to 250,000 undocumented immigrants. The Mass Budget and Policy Center estimates that 122,000 of them are employed in our state, many of them in jobs that have been deemed essential in the pandemic. Most of them do not write transit, first of all, because of the jobs that they do. And most of them, they do not live in the cities, especially because the cities have become a very expensive place. They cannot afford. The Work and Family Mobility Act, which was recommended for passage in February, but is still stuck in the Senate Ways and Means Committee, would allow any Massachusetts resident who meets all the qualifications to get a driver's license or ID, even if they don't have lawful immigration status. Mass Budget estimates that 160,000 drivers would benefit. The change would be relatively easy because Massachusetts already has two kinds of licenses, Real ID and the standard mass license. Since we have two already, why can't the standard one becomes available to everyone? Why it's Governor Baker who insisted on proof of lawful presence for standard licenses, and he's promised to veto this bill. His strong opposition is widely seen as the biggest obstacle, though House Speaker Robert DeLeo and Senate President Karen Spilka haven't exactly made this a priority either. Meanwhile, over 200 organizations have endorsed the bill, including police, who see this as a public safety issue. It's also a moral imperative. And more than ever, with the kind of anti-immigrant movement that it's building, we feel like we have to pass you know, progressive policies here in Massachusetts to show that we're not like other states, that we do not endorse the politics of Washington, D.C., that we're not like Trump. And as long as undocumented immigrants can't drive legally, they remain very vulnerable to the Trump deportation machine. It's a point at Dalia de Roja, political director for SEIU 32BJ and co-chair of the Driving Families Forward campaign, highlighted as we stood outside the JFK building. And this is where it starts, right? And usually it starts with a simple traffic stop. Why, you may ask? Because undocumented immigrants don't have access to a driver's license. So if you're at home, if people are at home crying and trying to figure out how do they help those kids in cages, how do they help those women who could no longer have kids, and that was a decision that they didn't make, this is how you can help. Call your legislator. Call Governor Baker. It's also important to keep showing up. Matt Taylor from Second Line, one of the lead organizers of Honk, said the band takes its cues from grassroots leaders like his friends at Gutsecha and fellow Honk organizer Harris Grumman, who leads the SEIU State it's Council. It's important to show up first mm -hmm. and listen and be present to the organization for the work that they want to be doing. For the driver's license campaign, which is working to build power and claim a place for immigrants as much as to pass this bill, 
it's a great partnership. It's about being alive and it's about being, you know, the energy, right, of the popular movements and to be creative and to, and to show that, uh, you know, we, this is not, this is something positive that we're trying to do. So get out there, make some noise, make some calls, because immigrant justice can't wait.
If you're looking for new ways to get fit during the pandemic, look no further. Tube Aerobics has you covered. Thank <laughs> you. 